Hello, welcome to Chats with Chelsea. Your vote matters. That is what we're talking about here today. I want to be very upfront with you and share that today's video is not to tell you who to vote for or even allude to it. I have no desire to. Right now, politics is so divisive, you know, the most divisive I've seen in my short time here. And I don't want to get into that. But what I do want to do is take this opportunity to encourage you and remind some of you of the fact that your vote matters and how you can take responsibility for your vote. So I'm here to tell you, vote, vote. Many of you know that I was very involved with politics back in Florida, um, from writing to being a part of campaigns to running as a local elected official and serving as one. And right now during election season, what I can tell you, this is where campaigns, whether for a candidate or an issue, you know, they're doing their 11th hour PR stunts. They are having talking heads on TV, which I was one of those, to go on and convince you of why you should vote for, you know, whoever on the presidential level, congressional level, state level, community level. Guess what? That's their role. That's their job. And it's nothing wrong with individuals who are doing that. Um, it is one way for you to get information. It is one way for you to learn more about the candidates and issues, but it should not be the only way. Let me repeat that. It should not be the only way that you learn. You have to take responsibility for your vote. And so what does that mean? That means that you should be going to candidate websites. You should be reading their websites. You should be Googling them. You should be looking at voting records if there are an incumbent or they've been in office before. If they are a new candidate, you should be Googling them to learn about their life. Who are they? What do they represent? What do they stand for? There are some values in my life that have remained constant and consistent over the past 10, 15 years, right? This is what I believe. My belief hasn't changed. My values haven't changed. But you know what has evolved over the years and through life experiences, um, professional experiences, is sometimes how these values should be handled by the government. How should these values be handled by the government? And so I challenge you to, one, make sure you know what your values are. I'm not talking about the values of your family. I'm not talking about the values of your church, your organization, your husband, your wife, your brother, your sister, your mom. What are your values? What matters to you? Know what your values are so that when you are casting your vote, you're casting your vote for someone who you believe will best represent your values. The other thing I will challenge you to do is not only to know your values, but also know when you are voting for a particular person running for office, how can they affect my values? I'll give you an example. Back in Jacksonville, I ran for Soil and Water Conservation District. Um, we had several different authorities and powers, but if you happen to have um, a social issue um, that you lean either way on, I didn't have jurisdiction to vote on that. That wasn't what was in the role in my duty as a commissioner for the Soil and Water Conservation District. So know when you're voting for someone, know what is what can your city council member do? What are their what is their role, right? What is the mayor's role? You want to know those differences so that you don't become a one issue voter. When you vote for someone, you are voting for someone and you're saying, I give them the okay to be my leader in this particular office. And so you want to know what it is that they can actually do. It doesn't change your values, but it also allows you to look at what's most important in that what that person could have what that person could change, right? Because if someone voted for me strictly because of one of my social values, that was great, but do you know where I stand on the soil and water conservation role? Did you know that in my role, I had the ability to, uh, as a collective, we had the ability to vote for a tax? Well, I did not support a tax. And so that would have been something that you would have wanted to know in my role of what I support. 
in where I landed on an issue that I had immediate jurisdiction over. It doesn't mean that my other values and principles was not important to you, but I wanna make sure that as individuals, that one, we don't get caught up on one issue, and that we also don't get caught up on one or two things in someone's past. Everyone has baggage. There's no perfect, perfect person on this earth only perfect person was Jesus. So there's no perfect candidate. The test that I like to use when I'm thinking about a candidate at any level is what are their fruits, right? Because I do believe in second chances. I do believe that people can evolve and grow, but what is their fruit? If someone did something 20 years ago that was not in line with what I believe, have they accepted responsibility for that action that they did? Um, and what have they done to correct it? And what do they plan to do to correct it? And how will they walk out their term in whatever office in this different light? Those are the questions that we should be asking ourselves and that we should be praying through and doing our research. As I have been reading some social media posts, you know, my heart has been aching. My heart has been hurting because some of my social media friends do not know how much their posts have hurt me because I may not agree with them. And for anyone who doesn't agree with them, you're being labeled X, Y, and Z. It is completely fine for you to believe that way and for you to hold that value. It is even completely fi fine for you to post it. But for those of you who are listening who know Jesus, I want to challenge you over these next two weeks to ask yourself, how am I showing Jesus during this time? How am I showing the love of God during this time? I'm not asking you to change your views, your values, or who you vote for. But I am asking you to consider what you're putting out into the world and how you're representing God during this time. So it is so key that if you haven't voted, that you vote. For those of you who have voted, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your vote. Whoever you voted for, thank you. Thank you for getting out to vote. For those who haven't voted, especially those who may feel like me, who just feel this heaviness, I want to encourage you first off to pray. Um, I know for the presidential election about a month ago, the Holy Spirit shared with me who I was going to vote for. I am still doing my research on some of the other candidates. Because of the heaviness, my research has, you know, some days I want to research, some days I don't. Um, but thank God that I am researching before election day and I still have the opportunity to do early voting and you too. But I just want to encourage those who just feel burdened down, who feel worrisome, who are nervous, who are even anxious or depressed during this season that you still have the right to vote and that in that there is authority and power that you have in this season over your life. And so I want to encourage you in that. So what should you be doing right now? One, it is perfectly fine to watch TV, to look at the social media ads. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those, but those should not be the only source of you deciding who you're going to vote for. Um, it shouldn't be someone outside of you, in Jesus, in God, telling you who you should vote for, right? You can receive all these different opinions, but this is a power, a right that you have that you should hold with high esteem very high esteem and so what you should be doing is researching go to the candidates website you know look at their opponents but also look at voting history what have they voted for who are you voting for you know know the role of the office this person in city council what should they be what do they have the ability to actually vote on and change know that do your research google them don't rely on someone else's research to guide you. Again, it is perfectly okay to listen, to receive input, to learn from other people, but I wanna encourage you to take responsibility for your vote. This is your vote. Um, in many places across the country, you will have multiple offices that are open. Don't get so focused on the presidential election that you forget about those statewide offices that will be on your ballot, that you forget about those local offices that will be on your ballot. I am a firm believer that politics is local, so you want to know everything you can about the person who's running for mayor or city council, 
whatever that seat is because those are the people that you're going to call when you need something fixed at your house when there's a pothole right or when your garbage isn't picked up so make sure you know who those local folks are as well make your plan to vote will there be long lines yes whether it's early voting especially on election day um, be prepared and if your line happens to be short good for you but you be prepared you be prepared to go in and form standing there walking into the voting booth with your uh, chest stuck out your head held high because you have put in the work to know that for each person that you're voting for that this is the person that best represents you this is the person that you believe should be the next leader in this particular office who's going to do things to better your community better your family um, and be a great leader overall so I just want to take a moment and say please do not stop praying pray for wisdom for for yourself pray for wisdom for those who have to vote pray for wisdom for our current leaders and our future leaders and at the end of the day if you are a believer in Christ I want to remind you that no matter who is elected in whatever office God is still God he still sits on the throne yet he's also given us a responsibility and that is to be informed and vote so with that I hope that you have a great week if you have not heard uh, in a few weeks I will become a published author can you believe it a devotional chapter that I wrote a few weeks ago will be published alongside 20 other black Christian women um, we are sharing portions of our story through a devotional chapter so if you would like to pre-order a signed copy of the devotional you can head over to my website lifewithchelsea.com purchase your book it's $25 it'll be mailed to you um, and be sure you're signed up for Chelsea Circle, which is my weekly newsletter where I'll be providing and continue to provide updates to you, but most importantly, encouragement, both spiritual and practical, to ensure that I can give you all the tools that God places in front of me to help you live out your purpose. Have a great week.